Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, you're going to analyze a video, so I'm very excited for that. Whenever I watch a video, I try to analyze it so I can understand it better and I can learn more things. So sometimes people think that just by watching movies and TV shows, they're gonna learn English. If you don't apply any strategy, you won't learn, unfortunately. So today I wanna show you how you can study and how you can analyze the videos um, by yourself. So before we get into today's video, I'd like you to subscribe subscribe if you're not a subscriber to hit the notification button here so you don't miss out any videos that i post also hit the thumbs up um just to show me that you really appreciate i am also on instagram and on other social medias i'm just gonna make sure to leave all my links in the description box down below so without further further issue no so without further ado let's go to our presentation so this is a video from the tv show called the rookie I love this TV show. I think it's funny. It it talks about police work and also the changing careers. I just like this TV show, so I decided to bring this one to analyze with you today. And there are many things that we can learn from it. So let's watch it. Be quick. As long as I get that free lunch you promised me, I am good. Everything's in the fridge. Help yourself. Hey, I love this shirt. It makes me look like a lumberjack. Hey, I know you. Nice to see you again. What's with the lecture face? This isn't lecture face. I don't have lecture face. That is 100% a lecture face. I'm gonna make a sandwich. Pete, what's going on with Chastity? Why are you really here? So she didn't tell you? No, she hung up on me. She's pissed. What? That's because she's... Yeah. I'm sorry, she's what? Pram. She's... She's fragrant? She's pregnant. What? Pete! So you... you... Walk out on her and let her believe you've gone missing? What are you? Oh, so I freaked out. Relax, okay? What, what exactly about this makes you think that I'll be a good dad, okay? I, I don't floss. I've never had a vegetable. I, I have the IQ of a hummingbird, which I'm told they're the stupidest of the birds. The biggest favor I can do for this kid is to just walk away. You can't be serious. I, you have a kid, right? W would you let me babysit? Uh, I'd be more likely to put her in charge of you. See? So you're gonna do to your baby what our dad did to me. Yeah, I know dad left you, but he stayed for me. And look how that turned out, all right? I just know if I stick around, I'm just gonna screw it up. Sorry to interrupt, but our zombie suspect is conscious. Sorry, did you say zombie? We'll finish this later. And the hummingbird is a proud and noble animal. Okay, so this was very interesting. Um, and if you didn't understand at first, I recommend you to go back and watch it again because more times you watch, more you will understand. They do speak fast, but it's just that they're their normal speed. And I don't think even it's fast, they're just connecting the sounds. So instead of just speaking fast, they're connecting the sounds like you do in your native language. So in today's video, you are going to analyze each sentence and see what we can learn from them. So the first scene is here when both cops um, get at Nolan's or John's home. So he says, As long as I get that free lunch you promised me, I am good. So, okay, he says, be quick, right? So I think it was a cut line, like, I'll, I'll be quick or it will be quick. And she said, you know, as long as I have the free lunch you promised me, blah, blah, blah. So let's see mm -hmm. here. Be quick is to be fast. Like, oh, it will be fast. I won't take long here. And then she says, as long as I get the free lunch, so as long as giving me a condition. So whenever you want to give someone a condition, like, um, you know, I if this happens, I won't mind at all. So if Nolan gives her the free lunch he promised, she doesn't really care. So as long as giving the condition. And here you can see it that she says, as long as, and then has the consequence, I am good. So if you do what you promised, I'm gonna be good. As long as giving me the condition. And then John replies, everything is in the fridge. So refrigerator in English, you can say simply fridge. Nobody really says refrigerator all the time, but fridge is very simple and short. So everything I have in the house, all my food is in the fridge. Help yourself. And to help yourself is to serve yourself of whatever food you want in my house. So to serve oneself as much food or drink as one would like, there's plenty of food, so help yourself. And then Pete is the other character that comes into play and he says, hey. So in informal English, you can say hello, hi, and hey. Hey is very common. Hey, I love the shirt. So 
he is talking about the shirt he's currently wearing and I think that it was a shirt that he borrowed from his brother. So Pete and John are brothers, okay? It makes me look like a lumberjack. So it makes me look. So the shirt gives me the look of a lumberjack, which is this person right here, the person that cuts wood. So a person who cuts wood is called a lumberjack. Hey, I know you, so I recognize you from somewhere. I've seen you before. And then Nyla says, nice to see you again, which is a very polite answer. Nice see you again. It's another option, but nice to see you again. Pete then goes, what's with the lecture face? What's with? What's with? So here, it's very common to use that structure. So why do you have this lecture face? What is the purpose of your lecture face? So what's with? What's with? the purpose, the reason why you have the lecture face. What is a lecture? So whenever you're mad at someone, you give this person a speech of how disappointed you are or something that you're not really content with that person. So a lecture, it's a long series speech, especially one giving as a scolding or reprimand. So whenever you know your parents are mad with you, they give you a full lecture, a whole speech on how what telling you what you did was wrong and how it was wrong and how you disappointed them. So lecture as a now. Then John says, this isn't a lecture phase. So he's saying like, this is not. So instead of saying this is not, you contract those words. This isn't, this isn't a lecture phase. By his intonation, you can kind of tell that he's not done talking. I don't have a lecture face. And then he looks over Nyla looking for some kind of confirmation. And you can do that with your intonation. You can do that by facial expressions, your body language. So whenever you're speaking English, use your intonation. Use everything you have in yourself, such as your hands or maybe your hair movements. So your body sometimes speak for you. So it's important to use that. So body language, right? I don't have a lecture face. And then Nyla says, that is a 100% a lecture face. Um, here, she emphasizes 100%. I don't know if you noticed, but all of the sentences are kind of flat. They stress different words because it conveys what they want to mean, the message they want to transmit. So whenever you want to emphasize one information, one word, you stress that word um, more than you stress others in the same sentence. So this is a 100% electro face. And then she says, I'm going to make a sandwich. I'm going to make a sandwich. I'm not very used to say that because I'm a is a contraction of several words, in fact, because you have I'm, which is I am. And then you have gonna, which is a contraction of going to. But then you can go an extra mile and you can say I'm a instead of saying I'm going to. So I'm going to make a sandwich. Which is very simpler to say, I'm just not very used to it. Maybe I should become used to it, but I'm gonna make a sandwich. Here you can notice that Ima ends in M-A and the next words start in, with M-A. So that's why when you're saying a sentence, you're not going to say I'm a make. You say one M-A, so I'm a make, I'm a make, I make a sandwich. She's going to make a sandwich. And then John says, Pete, what's going on? So he emphasizes the name Pete, right? Like Pete, pause, Pete, pause. Whenever you're speaking, it's important to give those pause. You cannot see commas. You cannot see periods indicating there is a pause. But you have to learn how to introduce those um, punctuations to make your speech better. So he says, Pete, pause. And then he keeps on, on talking. What's going on with chastity, which is a name of a person? What's going on? What is happening with chastity? Why are you really here? And in this sentence, I remember that he stressed the word really. Why are you really here? So I like, you know, you told me that you were here for one reason. And now I have this person calling me and I'm suspicious. I don't know why you're here. So he emphasized the word really because Pete lied to him um, about why he was in, in Nolan's house, why he went visiting him. So why are you really here? Emphasize that one. And then Pete says, so. So by his intonation, he's hiding something and you know that. So she didn't tell you. Here, you can use the word so to introduce a sentence, a topic, something that you want to say. 
she didn't tell you. A question. Whenever we have a question, we do need an auxiliary verb because we're talking about a past action where you're going to use the auxiliary verb did. Because it is a question, we start our question with the auxiliary verb did. But our question is a negative question. So did not become didn't. 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 She didn't tell you. Um, in informal English, not always we start our questions with the auxiliary verbs. It's very common, acceptable that you do your questions using only your intonation, like a video. I've taught this before to you, um, how to make questions in English, how to make informal questions in English. So I talk a little bit more about this there. But she, he could have said, you know, didn't she tell you? Didn't she tell you? Correct. Informal English, spoken English is also correct. Not to you. Um, exchange, swap the auxiliary verb with the pronoun so I can say she didn't tell you. So I show you, I indicate you that I'm making a question using only my intonation. And then Nolan says, no, she hung up on me. To hang up on someone is to end the call. And then he says, she's pissed. She's mad, right? So to hang up, so hung up is the present and hung up is the past um and then if you hung up or hang up on someone so you end a phone conversation by cutting the connection or turning the conversation off like you turn the call off and then she's pissed which is another word an informal word to say like she's mad pete well that's because she's no no no, no. and then you cannot understand what he's saying because clearly he's hiding something here guys he doesn't want to say what's really going on and I think he's afraid of his brother's reaction. And so he says, no, no, no. So that's because that's like why she is pissed, right? So that's because I'm justifying his uh, last sense of why she's pissed. So you can notice here that John didn't make a question like why she is pissed. He just simply said that she is pissed. But Pete goes ahead and starts ex explaining why he, she is pissed, why she's mad. So, oh, she's mad because, so that's because she's, and then here we have two contractions, that's, which is, that is, and she is, which is she's. John says, I'm sorry, she's what? So he didn't understand. And to ask, when you don't understand something, you can say, I'm sorry, what did you say? I'm sorry, what's that? There are many ways to ask someone when you don't understand something they said. So, she is what? She's what? She's what? Um, Pete says, pren, she's pren. So, you still cannot really understand here what he's saying. And then John is like very confused, guys, right? Like they don't know any better because the girl, like Nyla, understand what's going on. And she says, she's pregnant. To be pregnant is to have a baby in your belly. Women, right? When women have babies in their belly. John then gets astonished, like, what like she's pregnant so whenever you're speaking english you cannot forget your intonation like if you are surprised you wouldn't say what if you are surprised you're going to say what right so that's what he did what pete so like whenever you are surprised with something and you want to say like a kind of a reprimand you use the person's name like what pete so you walk out on her and to walk out on someone is just to leave that person, abandon that person. So, for example, my dad walked out on me. And so the preposition that you're going to use with walk out, which is a phrasal verb, is on. She walked out on me. He walked out on me. So you walked out on her and let her believe you've gone missing and here it's wrong. So it's her, not here, okay? It's not here, it's her. And you let her, and you let her, and you made her, you allowed her believe. So to let someone is to allow someone. So you let her believe. And then here, whenever you're speaking in a phrase, you don't say let her. You connect all of those sounds together. Letter, letter, almost like a letter. So you let her believe you've gone missing. Here we have a present perfect. And to go missing is to disappear by unknown reason. So oftentimes when you're watching criminal shows, crime shows, um, a person's gone missing because the person has disappeared. 
he used the present perfect because it was something that the guy let the girl believe in the past but it's still true it's still going on so because it is still true he says in the present perfect actually gone missing is to become lost or absent often under suspicious circumstances and disappear and then p says so i freaked out relax okay so to freak out is to have like this desperate reaction. So you receive sudden information, sudden news that you were not expecting and you don't know how to handle. So you freak out, you act um, irrational. You are just very surprised and you act irrationally. So it's a wildly irrational reaction or spell of behavior. And then he says, relax, okay? What exactly about this? And then he points to his face. So not only his face, but his person in general. Like, what about me? What about this? Makes you think. So lets you. So allows you. Right? Gives you the impression. Makes you think that I'll be a good dad. And then here we have the contraction. I will. And then you say, I'll. I'll. Right? Be a good dad. Okay. And then this okay is not like a question, it's like a question but with an exclamation point like okay, I don't floss and to floss is like this when you get a floss and you go through your teeth cleaning it. I've never had a vegetable and then you can say I've never eaten a vegetable but another way in English to say that you don't eat or you eat something is to have like for example, please have some snacks, eat some snacks. So I've never had a vegetable again. He's using present perfect because he's not used to eating vegetables. And it's something that he started in the past, not eating vegetables. And it's still true. So I've never had a vegetable. I have the IQ of a hummingbird. And then the IQ, maybe the level of intelligence. So hummingbird is this bird right here, which is really pretty. So a hummingbird, which I am told... So whenever someone tells you or several people tells you something, you can say, I was told. Because you don't want to acknowledge the person who told you that it's not important. You don't want to talk about that. Maybe you don't want to gossip about that person. So because you want to hide the person's identity, you can say, I was told. Because it doesn't really matter who told me. So you can say, Alisa told me. But I don't want to say that Alisa was the one who told me. So I can say, I was told because the person who told me it's irrelevant. I don't want to talk about her. So, which I am told they are the stupidest of the birds. And then when you're making comparisons, we have several ways to do so depending on our word. So smaller words, you're going to use the suffix EST. So for example, instead of saying the most, most red, you say reddest. The most nice, you would say the nicest. And when you use most or the suffix est, you're implying that that thing compared to many other things, it's higher. So for example, I am the prettiest. I am the prettiest, prettiest comparing my beauty with all the other women in the planet beauty. But if I want to say that I am prettier than someone else, I'm comparing two things, I am going to, to use the suffix er or the word more. Whenever you have smaller words, you're, going, you're most likely to use est. So nicest, prettiest, smartest, stupidest. If you have long words, you're more likely to use the word most in front of your adjective. So instead of saying expensive yeast, which it doesn't really exist, it would say most expensive, most expensive, or most beautiful, right? The biggest, and here I have another example, so biggest, because our word ends in CVS, which is consonant, vowel, consonant, we are going to double the last consonant and then add the suffix EST. So the word big, B-I-G, so big consonant, vowel consonant. We're going to um, double the last consonant and add E-S-T because we are talking about compared to all of the other's favors. So the biggest favor, so there are several types in, uh, of favors, several ways to 
retribute someone for something they did for you. So the biggest out of all the favors, the biggest favor is this one. I could do, and here we are using the modal verb could, could, I could do, because we are using could in the past. So this could here reply something that he did in the past because he's already walked out on her. So that walking out happened in the past because I'm talking about what I did in the past. I'm using the modal verb could. And then when you do a favor, you do something for someone and it's for the benefit or if it's for the other person's use, it can be positive or negative. You're going to use the preposition for. So I could do for this kid is just to walk away. So you have walk out, which is to leave, to um, abandon someone. And then you have walk away, which is not necessarily to abandon, but just to leave a situation, just to leave someone alone. But you're not necessarily abandoning this person. So I am having an argument with my husband and I'm tired of it. We're not getting anywhere and I don't want to argue anymore. So I walk away. That doesn't mean that I'm going to ask for a divorce, that I'm abandoning him. It's simply that I'm walking away to cool off, you know, to think better and start reasoning better and just because I'm tired. So I'm just going to cool off. I'm going to walk away from that argument. And then to walk away is to casually or irresponsibly withdraw. So leave from a situation in which one is involved or for which one is responsible. Pete says... Um, oh no. Oh, something is missing here. Okay, so Pete looks over Nyla and so he wants to prove his point. He wants to prove that he is right. So Pete looks at Nyla and he says, You have a kid, right? Remember that I told you that in informal in English, whenever you're making questions, you don't really need sometimes the use of an auxiliary verb. You can choose whether if you want or not use the auxiliary verb. And here, he didn't use it. So instead of saying, do you have a kid, right? He said, you have a kid, right? Because our verb have, it's an action verb. Because I don't know if you know, but have can be an auxiliary verb or an action verb. As an auxiliary verb, have is present in the perfect tenses. But here we're not talking about a perfect tense. Have is an action verb, is to own a kid. So you have a kid, right? And then write confirming his information. So I think she has a kid. So I'm just going to confirm that information with an informal question. You have a kid, right? Would you let me babysit? So would you hypothetically? So something that it didn't happen. I'm just asking you hypothetically. Would you let me? So would you allow me babysit and to watch over someone? Watch over an elderly, over a baby? So to have control or responsibility for something or someone. Then Nyla says, I'd be, so I would becomes I'd, I would, because they are talking about hypothetical situation here. I'd be more likely. And then when you are more likely to, you, um, the chances of a particular event happening is very high. So whenever you say more likely to, you're talking about the chances being high of something to happen or of you doing something to put her. So to let her to put her in charge of you and then to be in charge of someone is to um, control the situation, to, to be the boss of this person. So to be in charge of someone is to have control or responsibility over something or someone. To babysit is to look after a child or children while the parents are out. And then the chances of a particular event happening is very high is the uh, meaning of more likely to. And then Pete, you know, he hears his information and just confirms what he was saying. His whole point of walking out on her on chastity because she's pregnant. See? So here it's not like see with your eyes. No, see like... Do you realize it? Like I'm proving to you. See, John says, so again, he's um, introducing a sentence using the word. So you're going to do to your baby. So whenever you do something to someone, right, you're going to do, going to going to, you're going to do to your baby 
Whatever you do something to someone, right? You do something to someone. You're gonna do to your baby what our dad did to me. So we have a very simple, but sometimes it can be very confusing question. You're going to do, so here we have a question, but he didn't change, he didn't change the auxiliary verbs position. So he's just implying with his intonation that is a question. So you're gonna do to your baby what our dad and then we have the past of do which is did because nolan's dad already has done something to him in the past so pete is doing something right now just like nolan's dad did to him in the past so you have to be really aware of the tenses here whenever you're speaking you have to pay attention to that and then Pete says yeah i know dad left you so in a way that he didn't leave, he abandoned Nola. So I know dad left you, but he stayed for me. And look what that turned out, all right? So Nolan, here is a comparison because Nolan is this respectful cop and Pete is a drug addict. He doesn't really have a job. He doesn't have life aspirations. In fact, in this episode, Pete um, is trying to find himself like what i want to do to be this decent parent so turned out the result of something so like how it turned out to be it means the end the ha like how it happened or how it developed in a particular way so my cake turned out to be bad the result right so turned out is the result the end I just know, so just here emphasizing the fact that he knows if I stick around and then to stick around is to remain in or near a place. So if I stick around, if I stay with her and I stay close to the baby, I'm just going to screw up. And then to screw up is to cause something to fail or grow wrong. So whenever I make a mistake or you make a mistake, you can say I screw up, meaning I made a mistake. Nyla says, sorry to interrupt. Americans are very polite, so sorry to interrupt, but our zombie suspect is conscious. And then Pete says, sorry, did you just say zombie? Again, just here emphasizing an information like, did you just say zombie? John then goes, well, we'll finish this later. Will, will, like we will, will finish this later. So this conversation is not over. And a hummingbird is a proud and noble animal. And that's it from me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments down below. If you liked this video, if I talked really fast, I'm so sorry. You can slow down the speed on the video settings. But I really hope that you enjoy this kind of video. It's one of my favorite videos to make. One that also gives me a lot of work because some of the expressions are new to me as well. But this one was kind of easy. And it's nice because you can understand how a sentence structure works. You can learn new vocabulary and you can learn what it means in English. So the one thing that I believe that I strongly believe is that you have to learn something in English. If you keep translating to your language, you're most likely to keep translating and not understanding what it actually means in English and the way that it has in English. So if you want to learn English with quality, if you want to have a better communication, with other people, learn things in English that will help you. And at first it might be very difficult, but I promise you that as you go on, things will start getting easier. So don't forget to subscribe if you're not a subscriber, to thumbs up this video, hit the notification button to receive my, um, my uploads so you don't miss out any videos that I post here on my YouTube channel. I'm also on Instagram, Drielli Patsnik. Um, that Instagram is all in English, but if you do speak Portuguese and want to learn English in Portuguese, I do have a, a, an Instagram for that, which is Drielli Patsnik English. And then I'm also on YouTube, share with your friends. I do have a podcast where sometimes I teach a, a subject um, in English. Sometimes I just speak about my life and you can practice your listening and I can practice my speaking. And you can also do the imitation technique with my podcast. So... You can go to Spotify and search for ESL podcast. And you can check out my website with all my English courses and my blog. I do post a new blog post 
every week. So make sure to follow me there as well. Last week, I talked about turtles. So you can learn English with the turtles cause. And that's it. I hope you have an amazing week. I see you next and happy new years. I think happy new years. Okay. Bye-bye guys. Bye.